she hit the brakes as soon as she saw it. The truck's massive door had swung open, and from it, a muscular arm chucked out a large, black trash bag. The bag moved on the road. Something was inside, something alive. Her van veered off the road as she avoided the bag. Her fingers constricted around her steering wheel, her teeth gritting. The van came to a troubled stop, throwing rainwater, mud, and blades of grass into the air. She hurried out, sprinting to the bag on the road. Her breath caught when she saw what was inside. For Grace Cunningham, that rainy Monday afternoon was supposed to be spent in bed nursing a head-splitting migraine and flu. After a long weekend visiting some college friends in upstate Wyoming, she returned to her home in Cheyenne, ready to start a new week. She had no idea that her life was about to take a drastic turn. Getting the flu was the last thing on Grace's mind on her trip home. But a storm had devoured her city, keen on ruining her week. Before she knew it, she had a runny nose and fever and could barely keep any food down. She should have known that all this was leading her somewhere. Grace had always led a simple life. At the age of 30, she was yet to start her own family and was still wading through the dating pool, eager to find the love of her life. Working as an accountant, she lived by herself in a modest apartment just outside town. But by the end of that week, everything she thought she knew would be turned upside down. For Grace, a perfect day at work usually involved her helping her bosses make sound financial decisions by keeping track of and correcting the company's finances. Her position usually demanded a lot of direct contact with her bosses. So when she got the flu, she knew she wouldn't be staying at the office for long. Grace showed up early in the morning as usual despite being delirious and under heavy medication. The doctor had assured her she'd return to normal by morning, but that wasn't the case. With her handbag and documents in tow, she walked into the office. But her boss had already noticed she was under the weather by noon. So it didn't come as a surprise when he asked her to take the rest of the day and week off. Grace tried to plead her case, saying she was strong enough to work but her boss insisted that she take time to recover. She gathered her items and hopped into her van, eager to get home. She could watch a movie or read a novel, anything to pass the time. For now, she only needed to get to her house. The rain was pounding when Grace jumped into her van. Her house was an hour from her workplace, so she'd spend even more time on the road because of her condition and the heavy downpour. She turned on her seat warmer and radio, eager to make the drive as cozy as possible. There was no need to rush home. She had no clue what was waiting for her on the road. Grace was on the road for 30 minutes when her fuel light blinked on. Like clockwork, she pulled into the closest gas station. The rain was still pattering the stretch of empty tarmac before her. The gas station was also deserted, save for one freight truck. Although Grace initially didn't think much of the massive vehicle, Something kept telling her to keep an eye on it. Grace stepped out of her van and hurried to the gas pump, eager to escape the rain. She was still filling her tank when a burly, bearded man stepped out of the truck. He looked at her briefly before walking into the convenience store attached to the gas station. Still, Grace didn't notice that something was off. It would be soon that she phoned the authorities. She filled her tank and hurried inside to clear the bill. And that's when she saw it. The man was purchasing garbage bags, which he held in one hand. The other hand carried snacks, most of which were meant for kids. This detail struck Grace as odd. But she'd never been one to meddle in other people's businesses. Perhaps the man had kids at home and needed to buy a few supplies for the house. If only Grace knew what was happening. Grace paid for her gas and hurried out of the store. She jumped into her van and got back on the road. She still drove slowly, listening to the radio as the rain poured outside her vehicle. About ten minutes into the drive, and the large truck honked behind her. The sound was loud, causing her to jump in her seat. The truck honked again, and Grace knew she was in trouble. Get out of my way she switched lanes, thinking she was blocking the driver. But he came up behind her again, honking and stepping on the gas. The truck roared and surged forward the sound tearing through Grace. What is wrong with you? She shouted even though the driver couldn't hear her. She pressed her horn, wondering what was happening. 
Grace had never been one to engage in road rage. But sometimes, circumstances have a way of getting to a person. She couldn't understand why the man couldn't just drive around her. Both lanes were clear, with nothing but endless tarmac and trees caught in the rain staring at them. Was the man trying to instill fear in her? She'd seen that in a horror movie as a child. But his goal would be much worse. But Grace wouldn't break under pressure. She pressed her horn again and rolled down her window, waving at the man. She stuck her head out of the van to catch a glimpse of him. What she saw terrified her. But it was not nearly as bad as what was about to happen to her. Would Grace be able to pull through this? Can you just go around, please? She yelled, closing her window. But the man didn't take the offer. He kept honking at her. The man was incredibly persistent, and Grace didn't understand why. But the situation was getting dangerous, and she wasn't willing to take any chances. There was only one thing Grace could do to ensure her safety. Grace pulled her vehicle to the side of the road, skidding through the mud until she stopped. The truck blurred past her, throwing rainwater onto her windows. Grace couldn't believe how rude the driver was. She couldn't believe that he would risk people's lives the way he did. But she was about to learn that he was doing more than just that. Grace bit back a few curse words as anger roiled within her. How could some people be so inconsiderate? She took a deep breath to clear her head, not knowing this was only the beginning. The driver who had forced her off the road was nowhere near done with his antics. Could she handle what she would be forced to face next? Grace started her van back up and pulled into the highway. She'd already spent two hours on the road and was too angry to keep driving slowly. But she still had a grip on her senses. And with the rate at which people were driving, she would need to be extra careful. Otherwise, she could end up in yet another dangerous situation. Grace kept to the road rules, ensuring she didn't exceed the speed limit. She didn't think she'd see the truck again when she spied its bright red trailer out of nowhere in the distance. Its back her heart started slamming against her chest as she saw the distinct bumper sticker of the man who forced her off the road. She could sense that trouble lay ahead, and that feeling wasn't wrong. The rage that had caused her to drive to the side of the road flared within her once more. But Grace wouldn't let it take over again. She had a lot to look forward to and she wasn't going to let her night get ruined by a bad driver. Little did she know that the truck driver had yet another trick up his sleeve. Grace was almost home, and that's all that mattered. She already decided on the romantic comedy to watch and the type of soup to make. All she wanted was a warm, peaceful night. But her night would take a turn she wouldn't expect, and it would ruin all her plans. Would it be to her detriment? Grace followed the truck steadily realizing the driver was driving slower than her earlier. She considered blaring her horn at him as payback but thought against it. Two wrongs never make a right. Grace knew that all too well. And there was no way she was going to have this man back on her case. She had just gotten rid of him. She would drive behind him until she got a chance to overtake him. Or he would take a different exit from her. Somehow, they would pass each other and not give it a second thought. At least, that was what Grace thought. But her assumption was wrong. She was still lost in her head when she saw it. Grace watched on as the driver threw something large and black into the roadside mud before flooring his gas. His truck's engine whined and groaned, the exhaust blowing out thick black smoke. Once again, Grace was shocked by what the driver did. But this time, she was in for a bigger surprise. It was something she simply couldn't walk away from. Grace's sight was glued to the trash bag the man had thrown away. It seemed partly full and tightly tied at the top, lying limp in the middle of the road. She couldn't help but wonder what was inside it. Was it simply the trash he collected along the way? Or was there something else in it? The trucker sped up immediately, leaving the bag on the road. Grace almost ran it over before she realized it was moving. What on earth was going on? Did the trucker really just throw a living being out of his window? Or was Grace just imagining things? Could she take the risk by just driving away? Grace leaned toward her windshield, thinking she'd imagined it. But the bag moved again as if something or someone was trapped inside, unable to escape. She rubbed her eyes, 
unsure of what she was seeing. Has the bag really moved again? She was very unsure of herself since she was feeling so ill. But she couldn't take the risk. Grace's mind immediately flew to the convenience store. She recalled seeing the man pay for trash bags and children's snacks when she walked in to settle her bill. That had her heart slamming even harder. If she had to put two and two together, she would come to conclusions she would never want to come up with. There had been an air of dread around the man and his truck. Tara climbed up Grace's spine as reality dawned on her. She couldn't step on her brakes fast enough. What if it really was a child? What if whatever it was that was in that bag was injured? What if the man had committed a crime? Her van veered off the road as she swerved to avoid the bag. Her fingers constricted around her steering wheel, her teeth gritting as she held on for dear life. The move she pulled nearly had her losing control of her van. She nearly crashed in an attempt to avoid hitting the bag. But deep down, she knew the move was worth it. Her vehicle came to a troubled stop, throwing rainwater, mud, and blades of grass into the chilly air. Grace was in a state of panic and she had to take a few deep breaths to calm herself down before she could act. When she recovered her equilibrium, Grace rushed out of the car, not even bothering to close her door. Her sight was keen on the trash bag on the road. The bag moved again, and Grace stepped back. She hadn't imagined it before. Something or someone was truly trapped inside it. She had the impression of that from the very beginning, but now that she saw it up close, she was afraid. Had she made the right decision by pulling over the way she did? What was it that was in the bag? What had the man thrown out of his window? Grace looked around. Nothing but trees surrounded her. Even the truck that had caused the ruckus had disappeared into the distance, its engine's roar a fading echo in Grace's mind. So, this wasn't a package meant to be picked up by someone. Grace approached the bag, and when it moved again, she broke into a sprint to help free what was inside. Her mind raced with questions about what it could be. But at that moment, the source of the movement wasn't really her biggest concern. All she wanted to do was get whatever it was out of the bag and see if it was okay or not. Grace needed to stay focused. What if whatever was inside the bag was a dangerous animal? What if she was in danger and needed to return to her car and drive off? There was only one way to find out. Grace's hands were shaking as she tried to reach out. But before she could even touch the bag, she changed her mind. She wasn't willing to risk getting bitten. Grace bit back her fear and gathered enough courage to poke the bag with her foot. It moved and stopped abruptly as if whatever or whoever was inside was just as scared as she was. That comforted Grace a little. She didn't know why, but it did, and that gave her the courage to get a little closer. Hello? Grace called out in a soft voice. What if the man had trapped a toddler in the bag, keen to get rid of them? It was already evening, and most cars zooming down the road wouldn't stop to check what was inside the bag. They would run it over. If her suspicions were correct, it could have a tragic end. With her heart pounding the confines of her ears, Grace grabbed the ropes tying the bag shut. She took a deep breath and pulled them open. The air was knocked from her lungs as her eyes landed on the content. It was something she never wanted to see. But she was in that position now, and there was no turning back. Grace's breath caught as she stared at what was inside. Oh Lord, she said, her eyes tearing as she took in the scene in front of her. How could someone do such a thing? How could a person possibly be so cruel? Those babies didn't deserve to be treated in such a way. No one did. Inside the bag were five kittens. But sadly, only three of them were alive. They meowed up at Grace with big eyes, trying to fight their way out of the bag. The sight was a crushing one, especially for someone who loved animals as much as Grace did. She wanted to help the poor critters. She really did. But could she? Grace looked around again. She was still alone in the middle of the road, with no one to claim the little fur balls of joy. She really hoped that someone would take responsibility for this. But it was clear that she was the only one who could. At that point in time, there was only one thing she could do. Grace took the kittens with her, carrying them carefully as she made her way to her van. 
She got them all snug in the back seat and was about to leave when she looked back at the bag. Before she could drive off, she had to do something. Being as gentle as she could, she buried the two that didn't make it in the woods by the roadside. After that, Grace drove home with the kittens. She was fully aware that she need to find them a home as soon as possible. But she had no idea what she'd gotten herself into. Those kittens had not only turned her life upside down once. They would keep her on an emotional roller coaster that could go either way. As soon as Grace got home, she realized that having so many kittens around wasn't going to be easy. She had no pets, so she had nothing to feed them. Plus, they were so tiny, she wasn't sure whether or not they could eat solid food. That was when she truly realized that the task ahead of her would be far from easy. Grace got up early the next morning. She had a whole list of things to get through, and all of them revolved around the kittens. She needed to get them food, and after that, she needed to find them homes. But being as inexperienced as she was, she didn't realize that her next problem would revolve around getting rid of them. Any person who had to nurse kittens during their life would know that kittens need to be at least 10 weeks old before they can safely be removed from the comfort of their mothers. These kittens were nowhere near that mark. And even though Grace didn't have a choice but to take them in, not many people were willing to deal with the risks involved. Grace did everything she thought was right. She took the kittens to the vet, who gave them their shots and did a few thorough checks on them. She was concerned about the fall and the damage it might have caused. And just like with humans, the symptoms of certain injuries were easily masked. Was that the case with the kittens? The vet assured Grace that the kittens were perfectly fine, which was a miracle considering what they had gone through. But that wasn't all she found. After doing a DNA test, the vet discovered that the kittens were Maine Coons, a very expensive breed to just throw out a truck window. But that also meant getting rid of them would be much harder. In a moment of panic, Grace broke down. She had no idea what to do and turned to the vet for advice. She carefully listened as the vet explained why finding a home for her kittens would be difficult. Each piece of information made her doubt herself even more, and by the end, she started wondering if she would have been better off not rescuing the little critters. Maine Coons are among the biggest domestic cats in the world, the vet said with his eyes glued on the litter of kittens. They need a lot of love and attention to raise. He informed Grace that someone would need to look after the kittens until they were mature enough to be rehomed. She also suggested that Grace try the local animal shelter. Maybe they could take the kittens off her hands. After leaving the vet, Grace stopped at the local animal shelter, but they had even more bad news for her. She explained her situation, stating that she wasn't equipped to raise the breed of kittens she had on her hands. But even though the shelter listened carefully and agreed that she couldn't possibly take care of the kittens, they refused to take them. But the bad news didn't stop there. The shelter informed Grace that she'd need unique kinds of food, bedding, and grooming items specific to Maine Coons. Since the species was rare and highly sought after, these items would cost a pretty penny. She'd also need to make several appointments with a specialized doctor to ensure her cats were healthy. Grace was devastated. Grace was on the verge of tears when the shelter staff explained that they didn't have the space to take in any more felines. Her heart broke as she listened to everything she needed to do to care for the kittens. Yet again, she wondered if saving them had been the right thing. She'd never questioned herself as much as she did now. As she walked out of the shelter, she realized that they had not lied to her. Every cage she walked by was filled to the brim with animals from cats and dogs to rabbits and iguanas. The manager told her that they hadn't had any adoptions in months. It wasn't that they didn't want to help. They couldn't afford to do so at the time. So Grace had no choice but to take the kittens back home and care for them to the best of her abilities. She checked her bank account first, ensuring she had money to get a few supplies for the cat. She was scared of what she'd gotten herself into, but she knew giving up wasn't in the cards for her. Luckily, the vet advised her what kittens their age needed, and she got everything on her way home. Bundling up the information from the vet and the shelter, Grace was able to make a few purchases that would assist her in taking care of the kittens. From cat food and grooming supplies to mats and toys, she got everything any cat lady should have for their babies. But she was still concerned. 
She wasn't confident in her abilities and had no idea what she would do once the kittens were mature enough to leave. Grace took the next few weeks one day at a time, and she soon discovered that taking care of the little critters wasn't as complicated as she thought it would be. Yes, it was tiring to run after each kitten, trying to feed, wash, or groom it, but it wasn't long before things started to fall into place. The once chaotic kittens were slowly calming down, showing Grace she'd made the right choice in saving them. They pretty much slept for the majority of the day, and when they woke up, all they wanted to do was eat and cuddle. She bathed and groomed them, then poured some wet food for their lunch. Later, she'd give them dry food and cuddle with them while watching a movie or working from her laptop. Slowly and slowly, her life was returning to normal. But there was one kitten who stood out above the rest. With his shiny silver fur and his playful personality, he managed to steal Grace's heart. He was energetic, always leading his siblings to trouble. Whenever something went wrong, like utensils falling in the kitchen at 3 a.m., Grace could bet he was at the forefront. It had gotten to the point where she didn't want to give him up. And after some careful consideration, she decided that keeping one of them would do no harm. The chaos the cat brought was well contrasted by how loving he was. He was the first to wrap himself around Grace's leg whenever she showed up at work and the first to finish his food and come cuddle with her on the couch. It was as if she'd found her soulmate. Grace called the kitten Jimmy after her late father. His antics often reminded her of the man who had raised her, and she thought it would be a fitting tribute. Jimmy even liked old western movies, which Grace's dad adored. He'd settled down whenever the dry orange landscapes of the Wild West would paint themselves on the screen, just as her dad used to do. But was Grace really cut out to be a cat mom? She adored animals, particularly cats. However, her work took up most of her time, and she was hardly ever home. To add to this, the cats were growing bigger by the day. They were almost the size of normal cats now, and she knew they'd scare off any sitter she brought to watch over them. But what could she do? Grace didn't care if she was fit for it or not. She adored little Jimmy and knew she would never be able to part with him. She was already looking to fix her spare room for him, anticipating how huge he would be when he finally grew into an adult cat. Her only hope was that she'd be able to find good homes for his siblings. Plus, she had managed to balance her job and the kittens for so long already. She was confident she could do the same for the little fluff ball she had come to adore. She started working on the room at her earliest convenience, and just like everything else involving the kittens, it wasn't cheap. But Grace wasn't going to give up now. The eight weeks the kittens needed to mature had finally passed, and it was time for Grace to say her goodbyes. The kittens were twice the size of normal cats, with the vet telling Grace they would get bigger. She posted an ad in the local newspaper stating that she had a few Maine Coon kittens that needed good homes. It didn't take long before the ad gained some traction. The responses came pouring in, with many pet lovers saying they were in the market for Maine Coon kittens. Some even wanted to take Jimmy, but Grace wouldn't allow it. Before long, all the kittens saved for Jimmy were gone, and Grace's home was silent once more. As she sat down on the couch that night, she helped little Jimmy onto her lap. The kitten purred in delight, earning a smile. He was so large she could barely carry him for an hour straight. He was also burning through his cat food, which always made Grace smile. Sitting here with him, she couldn't help but think. Her mind recalled everything she'd been through, from the day she found the kittens all those weeks ago to now. She remembered how fearful she was when she discovered she'd have to raise them. As she looked down at the little guy, she realized that none of that would have happened if she didn't decide to stop so she could find out what was in the bag. 